You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, folks, a couple days ago, the Virginia Senate voted to get rid of a state holiday honoring two white supremacists and create a new holiday on Election Day. The vote was 22 to 18 to do away with the Lee Jackson holiday with every Democrat and one Republican uh, in favor. Now the bill now heads to the House. Now, you understand, uh, Virginia, the cradle of the Confederacy, if you will, uh, they have long honored Stonewall Jackson as well as Robert E. Lee. And actually, it's even more so shameful because they decided to put the same day on MLK's birthday. Uh, and Lieutenant Governor Just, Just, Justin Fairfax, the second uh, African-American in that position, uh, when it would come up, he would actually step off uh, the podium, leading the Virginia Senate. Well, now that this action has passed, and hopefully the House does it, and the governor signs it into law, they will be rid of this holiday honoring these white supremacists. Joining us right now on the phone lines is Virginia Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax. Uh, glad to have you back at Rollermark Unfiltered. And Brother Rollins, great to be back on with you. Uh, thanks so much. So this uh, obviously uh, was a big decision. Monday, uh, you spoke at the wreath laying ceremony at the MLK Memorial, and this action came the next day. Uh, and uh, yeah. how long did Virginia have this Lee Jackson holiday that coincided with MLK Day? Yeah, you know, well, it goes back to at least 1889. Uh, so you're talking about, you know, over 130 years. And uh, and this was a tradition that they had in the Senate. And, and as you mentioned, uh, you know, when I began presiding over the Senate, actually on MLK Day in 2018 uh, was when I took the helm of the senator's lieutenant governor. Uh, later in that session, uh, they moved to adjourn in honor and memory of Robert Lee and Stonewall Jackson. And, and as you noted, I stepped down from the dais uh, and from presiding in a silent protest because, you know, that's not who we are and it's not who we want to be uh, going into the next 400 years of this country. And so uh, we did that. Uh, it was a lonely protest, uh, but uh, I got a lot of support from uh, people in Virginia and around the country. Uh, and then in 2019, uh, the same thing occurred, and I once again stepped down. And then, of course, this year, uh, just a couple uh, days ago, uh, the Senate voted to end Lee Jackson uh, Day and, and also to create a holiday uh, for Election Day in Virginia. So this is a huge leap forward, a huge statement about inclusion and giving people uh, more rights and more opportunity. And, uh, and it's really a monumental uh, time uh, in Virginia. And to you know, be able to give the keynote at the uh, MLK Memorial on MLK Day was an extraordinary uh, honor. And we talked about having courage and, and, and not having a spirit of fear. And, and that's exactly uh, what we brought to, uh, you know, to this discussion, this debate. And it's changed something that was happening for 130 years. So, Virginia's been celebrating this for 130 years, uh, and uh, did, did they move to actually put it on the same day as MLK Day, which was just grossly offensive? Yeah, it, it absolutely was offensive, and, and yes, and, and in fact, for some time, they, they linked all three together. So they had what was known as Lee Jackson uh, Martin Luther King Day, uh, and, you know, it was outrageous. And, and so, uh, you know, that was changed, I believe, in 2000 to separate the two so that Dr. King's birthday would be on the Monday and Lee Jackson Day would be the Friday uh, preceding it. But, you know, to me, that wasn't uh, sufficient. Uh, and when I was first presented with this, uh, presiding over the Senate back in 2018, uh, as soon as I was informed that they planned to do this, I mean, it, it took me zero seconds to understand and to express that I was not going to participate in this and that we needed to take a stand. And sometimes you take a stand by sitting down. Uh, and that protest, again, was something that uh, traveled all around uh, the country. Uh, and actually in 2019, Roland, you may recall, I brought uh, descendants of Robert E. Lee uh, and of Stonewall Jackson with me uh, to the Senate. Uh, and I honored them in the Senate. They also uh, opposed uh, Lee Jackson Day. And that was a huge statement uh, when they came with me uh, to the Senate. Descendants of Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson to say, uh, it is time to uh, change, it's time uh, to turn the page, to uh, go into the next 400 years in a very different way. And, and so one year actually to the day of when I brought those descendants of Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson to the Senate, uh, the Senate voted to end the holiday. And as you know, I am descended from Simon Fairfax, who uh, was enslaved in Virginia uh, and freed in 1798 by the Ninth Lord Fairfax. 
which is how I got my last name, Fairfax. And so, uh, you know, we have an incredible history, but for the descendants of an enslaved uh, man in Virginia uh, and the descendants of Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson to come together to make that statement, uh, it's really an extraordinary thing. Um, now, the election day piece uh, is also important, so making this a state holiday. Uh, so if it passes the House and signed by the governor, it becomes law. And so will employers, uh, how, how will that work uh, for people who work in the state? Is it left up to the employ employers to honor that, or is it everybody gets a day off? <laughs> you know, well, if it proceeds sort of in its current form, it would be a state holiday, and essentially what it does is it replaces uh, Lee Jackson Day. So that day would no longer uh, exist as a holiday, but you'd have the same number of holidays, state holidays, uh, because Election Day would take its place. And so uh, we'll, we'll look at it as it's uh, winding its way through the House and also into the governor's desk. The governor, uh, you know, has indicated this was a priority for him. It's a priority for us, uh, in the lieutenant governor's office. And so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll certainly give you know, ample notice to, to employers and everybody about the change. But uh, you know, this is a monumental uh, change, you know, in, in Virginia, and it sends a signal to the country uh, that, you know, we really are in sort of a new dominion. Uh, and last year, we commemorated 400 years uh, of the first meeting of our General Assembly in 1619 in Jamestown, but also 400 years since the first enslaved Africans were brought to Virginia in Hampton, Fort Monroe, uh, Point Comfort. And as I've said, Roland, many times, uh, those are the dual strands of darkness and light that have run through the veins of the Commonwealth of Virginia and through our nation uh, for the past four centuries. And every generation, uh, we have to uh, determine who it is we are going to be and whether or not we're going to fight for a brighter future that's more inclusive. And I'm the only, se only the second African-American ever uh, to serve uh, in statewide office in Virginia following the footsteps of a great man, uh, L. Douglas Wilder, uh, governor who was elected lieutenant governor in 1985 and then governor in 1989. Uh, and so uh, there's this extremely rich legacy uh, and also an incredible opportunity uh, to do something that will change the course of history. Uh, but we've got to have a different kind of politics. It can't be about insider politics. It's really got to be about the people, and that's really what we represent. All right, then, uh, Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax, we certainly appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. God bless you, Rowley. Keep up the great work, and, and thank you so much for all you do. All right, thanks very much. Let's go to our panel, Risa Colbert, Black Women's Views, Michael Brown, former vice chair, DNC Finance Committee, uh, via Skype, Rob Richardson. He's the host of Disruption Now podcast. Dr. Jason Nichols, Department of African American Studies at the University of Maryland. Uh, Michael Brown, obviously this is, uh, you know, one, it's ridiculous for Virginia to, to you know, having these honors of white supremacists, uh, folks who want to keep slavery. Uh, so thank goodness that day is gone. But also, it's important uh, to make Election Day uh, a holiday. Folks should be able to have that day off to go vote. More states should do that. And frankly, it should be a federal holiday. But uh, it's interesting, and you and I talk about this all the time, Ron, elections have consequences. If the Democrats, if Virginia did not turn blue, you better believe this holiday would still be on the books. And that's, that's good that, you know, when people come out, it, it really makes a difference relative to legislation and how it matters to your everyday life. Uh, Reese, I mean, um, yeah, I think when you look at these two, um, at the end of the day, uh, elections do matter. And uh, you have in these southern states where you have, have had white folks, uh, especially Republicans, embracing, supporting these white supremacists, right. Virginia and Mississippi, Alabama, we can go down the line. Uh, and so, yeah, when you put black folks in charge and we go to the polls and throw these folks out, you can start right. changing stuff for the right. better. Right. I'm, I was raised in okay. Cali, so the notion of a white supremacist holiday is completely unconscionable to me. <laughs> and to make it coincide with Dr. King Day is that much more insulting. So this is correcting a long overdue wrong. And I think that it's that much more of an honor to Dr. King's legacy to increase basically access to civil rights, which is voting. So I think that this is a remarkable step. First step, we have to, you know, they have to get it through the House and on the governor's desk. But I think that it's it's not only correcting a wrong, but, you know, it's it's making it that much better by increasing access to the polls. Uh, Rob, Jason, what do you make of uh, the Virginia Senate? Obviously, go to the House. Democrats not control the House and the Senate, and so Republicans are standing by, and I'm sure those white Republicans are, are really upset that they not have to suck it up, and they can't stop these things from being passed. Well, I'll just say this very quickly. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be, because I don't see why this is a partisan issue. I say that 
rhetorically, but we know why it is. But like, look, um, this actually reminds me of the law of avoidance. The more something threatens your identity, the more you want to avoid it. So they didn't want to acknowledge what Dr. Martin Luther King did. Uh, obviously, some people have uh, a problem with wanting to get rid of white supremacy because it's they see it as part of their identity. Uh, it's 2020. Look, it's, t it's time to let that go. And uh, this is a, a first step. Uh, frankly, we need to do a lot more. Of course, uh, actually, Election Day should always be a holiday. But to this specific point, we need to do we need to do the United States, I think, needs to do what Germany did in Germany. Uh, everywhere you go, there is a place that talks about when a when a Jewish person was assassinated, uh, what happened there. Whenever we talk about race, whenever we talk about racism, everyone wants to just avoid the subject and leave it. And that's really uh, at the heart of our problem right here in America, in my opinion. Jason. Yeah, I would say that it's even more that they don't want to avoid it, that they just want to absolutely uh, destroy the truth, uh, destroy Dr. King's legacy, uh, cover it up. And, you know, this is something that's been long standing for, for a long time. I'm very glad that they changed it. And one of your other panelists, I think, made the, the really important point about the fact that uh, this is opening up uh, opportunities for democracy and opening up, uh, you know, access for African American people in a very important state. Um, and so I think that, you know, what uh, Governor, Lieutenant Governor Fairfax did was incredibly important, not only for the historical legacy, but for the opera, for the, the chance that it's going to give for more people to access the polls, uh, particularly working class people. And in Virginia, where my family's from, uh, that will, a lot of those people will be African American people from Northern Virginia and from the Hampton Roads area and other parts of Virginia. So I think it's, you know, it's really important for us to, to acknowledge the past, but also this is important because it's showing where we're headed as a nation or where we should be headed as a nation, giving people more access to our, our democracy instead of constricting it. And let me just and point just out point too out that too. we had just one Republican uh -huh vote with the Democrats in, to overturn Robert th this this holiday. Mm -hmm. So hopefully going into the Senate, or it's going to the House, I'm sorry, there will be more pressure on Republicans to stand on the right side of history here. So they should not keep continually getting a free pass to vote party lines against civil rights, against correcting, rectifying these wrongs from these unconscionable holidays. So that's why I think it's hilarious anytime idiots like Dinesh D'Souza mm -hmm. uh, starts running around talking about, oh, Democrats formed the Klan and Democrats did this here, uh, and he's going back to the, uh, to the 19th century, then the 20th century. If, but the question is, who are the people in the 21st century today who are defending these white supremacists? Right. Republicans mm -hmm. across the board mm -hmm. uh, in, in numerous states on the federal level as well as uh, on the state level. And so, but you never hear folks like Dinesh and Charlie Kirk and idiots like Candace Owens talk about that because <laughs> it's a little hard uh, to do that uh, when your master is the one who is actually running the whole show. So that's how that whole deal works. Well, check out Rollerbart Unfiltered, youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roland Martin Unfiltered. See that name right there? Roland Martin Unfiltered. Like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications so when we go live, you'll know it.